spirit is still here in Lillehammer. Closing ceremony over tonight at Lidsgard's Back and Ski Jump. And back in the studio with us, the people who called it, Dan Matheson and Valerie Pringle. How we was called it? it. We, we called, called it. it. We were the first to say the plane was going out, and it went out. It was kind of an astounding moment. It was. It, it, you think 16 days ago, uh, we had, we're all such vim and vigor, and we're all so excited about these games. And now, they're over. Does that make you sad? It makes me sad, actually. It yeah, it is sense. kind of a bittersweet moment. I, it's happened uh, at all the Olympics I've been to before. People get caught up in it. It's the window of the world, you know. People, the whole world looks at you. The whole world hadn't heard of Lillehammer as of, what, six months ago? And then as the games got closer and closer, everyone is looking at this little town, and suddenly these people came alive when their games went the way they were supposed to go, when they were told by, as Juan Antonio Samaritch finally did tonight, again, <laughs> yeah. that these are great games. You guys are great hosts. Gosh, you have great athletes. Uh, suddenly, I think this whole neighborhood, this whole country just rallied around these games. They became very special. And it's really hard when you lose the excitement and the spotlight moves away someplace else. I think it's going to be a, a kind of a lonely, empty feeling here now that the party's over. The people in Calgary had that feeling. Yeah, sure. Yeah, they some of, they the, still do. <laughs> the volunteers who, you know, everyone does put their heart and soul into these things. And we were saying you couldn't in a million years, meteorologically. I mean, I think for six weeks <laughs> before these games started, day after day, as I said, it was like the Winnie the Pooh story. It snowed and it snowed and it snowed. And, you know, the rooftops and fence posts and everything was just covered in that downy snow. And the flame was lit, you know, like being shaken up in a snowball, as Kate Pace put it. That perfect night when the, ser when the games began. And then the sun came out. And day after day, these spectacular blue Norwegian skies. 16 straight days, and we came in um, tonight, and it was starting to starting snow to again. Snow again. <laughs> yeah. It was never again yeah. in history. But the most repeated. amazing thing about this whole visit for me has been the Norwegians. Norwegians are unbelievable people. They're the way I think Canadians think they can be. They are, th am I wrong here? They are remarkably polite, friendly, like Canadians. helpful, to a degree <laughs> far beyond what we are. Yeah. And, um, and, one they're of the very things, proud. Yeah. Well, one of the things I think is really important for us to remember about these people, uh, the sports fans at home who are the most supportive, who cheer for everybody, are golf fans and curling fans, because the only people that would ever watch golf or curling are golfers and curlers. And they know that the game can rise up and whack you. So they pull for everybody. Eh, they may pull for somebody a little more. But Norwegians are all... They all go out and do things. They're not spectators. You know, we like our spectacles at home, our gladiator sports, our football, baseball, our hockey, and we watch those things. We don't play them. The sports these people love are the sports they go out and do every day. I had, actually, I think, about my most wonderful moment here, just personally, apart from the games. I was taken up in the mountains for a moonlight ski one night, about 11 at night, and full moon, because it's been so bright all this uh, whole Olympic Games. And up above the timber line, um, we were just taken along silently, and the snow was twinkling. I've never seen anything like this. And swooshing along, I mean, it's true, it sounds very corny, but I thought, I am a Berkebiner. <laughs> I'm in the cradle of skiing. This is spectacular. I mean, this is where it all, you know, began. And people are all out on their skis. We passed a little cabin nestled away in the snow. You just catch the smell of burning wood, and, you know, the light in the window is there, and skis up by the door, and it was just Magic. spectacular. But you know, the other side of the coin, the thing that makes people cynical at home is what happened today in Orlando. Nancy Kerrigan was not here. Nancy Kerrigan was not in the parade. She didn't see the torch go out. She was at Disney World today with her arm around Mickey Mouse, where she signed a deal for a reported $2 million. You know, ticker tape parade, yes, for Nancy Kerrigan, but it was, you know, a big commercial for Mickey Mouse in Disney World. And that's why people are so cynical about elite athletics and elite athletes. Well, and yet... You know, and I was saying this to you before, you know, we're going to head back to Canada AM, and um, it'll be hard to go back to interviewing mere mortals and politicians <laughs> again, because, you know, in this chair, you know, Jean-Luc Broussard, who is about the most charming, delightful young man, and, you know, Johan Olaf Koss, so impressive, I mean... There are athletes, sure, who are, you know, caught up in the minutiae of their sport and they have a small, I mean, an, a large talent in a very small area. They're not all larger than life. But the ones who are larger than life are sort of tested on so many levels, you know, in their heads, in their hearts, in their bodies. And, you know, over the years of interviewing athletes, I, you know, I 
have found so many so impressive. And here, Vagard Olbank sat in this chair. <laughs> Bjorn Dolly. I mean, Miriam Bedard. These are, these are some people. Tell me about your best moments. The, the moments that will, and there are a lot of them. And we have a lot of them in our little gallery here, framed forever. But tell us about your best moments. The ones you'll always remember from these games. Oh, I like that one up there. <laughs> Hold on, I got that, my prop here. That guy up there. This is my flag. <laughs> I waved this oh. at those hockey games. My you, daughter's flag. I saw the seven faces of Valerie today at the hockey game. Wow, she got a lot of emotional range. <laughs> I heard her. From from, I heard her from the he bench. Had, he had to watch games. He had to we watch the races catatonic. here with me. <laughs> Asked me about my shoulder when she was <laughs> yanking it out of the socket. But oh, it's thrilling. Yeah. Some of those races, I was saying to Miriam Bedard, I never, you'd never have known I was a human being watching a 7.5 kilometer biathlon race. You know the moments I like. I, I mm -hmm. like the moments when an athlete has to rise above their talent. They have to win with their head, their heart, their guts. And I think of, um, uh, you know, Jens Weissflog, mm -hmm. the ski jumper from Germany, who comes into this town and whacks the young superstar big time. In the first time they go head to head off that huge jump, the kid choked. The kid had a shot. Espen Bredesen. Espen Bredesen got to go last. Well, I don't know if you're jumping off a ski jump. He choked <laughs> it up. And then the exact same thing happened off the small hill, where, again, somebody hit a big jump, and Espen gets to the top. Now, it's a countryman he's looking at beating mm -hmm. this time. But still, it was the exact same position he was in. It was there for him, and he had to just screw it on and have the courage to go get it. And he did that time. That was a very special moment for me. I like that. What about you? There are lots of them. She likes yeah. all of them. Oh, I know. Well, you make me sound like I'm not discriminating or anything. <laughs> I, yeah, no, the skating was so fabulous. I thought the, the level of figure skating, even though there were nights I walked out of that arena and hammer thinking the wrong um, person walked off with the Are you talking about short track skating? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was, I to, to, to be honest, that was track. one of my best moments. And you know, Stephen Goff, young kid from Fredericton, slips in the relay. Canada should have won a medal in that relay. He had the guts to come up and talk to Canada, make no excuses, explain what happened, said it was his fault. And that kid will learn with, from that. And, and I think a lot of people back home can learn from a young fellow who makes a mistake. They're only athletes. They're mere mortals. Well, that looks great on the kid, but the sport is a shambles. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was an embarrassment to the Olympic movement, and they have to clean up or they're going to be on the bubble shortly. I know it's a young you, sport, you have to be patient. I was going to ask you, your, I mean, was that the moment for you? All of these moments, and you know, the opening day when that ski jumper came down <laughs> with that flame. Live to tell the tale. I mean, that to me was so special, so special. Thanks for being part of this. It was great. We'll be back with more after this.